So the new line from the government is that the police didn't maybe specifically ask for the emergency act to be used, but they wanted the powers contained in the act. Well, if that was the case, why didn't the minister actually say that? So is it all a misunderstanding or is it an act of misleading? We did invite Minister Mendocino onto power play. We were told he's not available today, but we do have MPs here. Parliamentary Emergency Preparedness, uh, se uh, Parliamentary Secretary Yasser Nakvi is here. So is the Conservative Public Safety Critic Raquel Dancho and the NDP Public Safety Critic Alistair McGregor. Welcome all. Uh, Mr. Nakvi, I'll start with you. Um, you've got February 21st. Uh, Minister saying, we must follow the advice of police on this. February 21st, we will follow the advice of police who are telling us the act is still necessary. May 2nd, the minister, at the recommendation of the police, we invoke the Emergencies Act. The police say they didn't. Did the minister mislead? Why was he saying that they recommended it when no police force thus far has said that? Well, Evan, thank you very much for having me on the on the show. As you also probably know, and listeners may not, that I'm also the member of parliament for the riding, uh, the area where the three week long occupation took place. And as many would remember, this occupation uh, uh, lasted for very long, three weeks with drastic impacts uh, on, on what was happening in the downtown core in terms of our businesses being closed and um, and residents being being harassed in downtown Ottawa. And it was very clear that there was no end in sight. During this, this whole period, uh, the government, of course, was in contact with getting briefings and consulting with law enforcement officials to better understand the situation uh, on the ground and to, and to find ways to put an end uh, to this uh, occupation. And in, in that course, uh, there was advice given as to the kind of gaps law enforcement was seeing with the with the, the nature uh, of that occupation and the, the, uh, the evolving nature of that occupation that resulted in blockades around many key crossings across uh, the country. And the government acted on that advice by creating uh, uh, special orders under the Emergencies Act that allowed uh, for law enforcement. But, to Minister, I, I don't want to relitigate. I understand why your government thinks it's justified, but the argument here is that the minister said, I just want to know if, if this is a true statement, and you're a lawyer, I know you understand this, sir. Marco Mendicino, February 20, 21st, we follow the advice of the police and other experts who are telling us that the act is it's still necessary. We will use the measure um, that we must follow the advice of police. We know the Ottawa police didn't give them advice to use it, and nor did the RCMP. Is it true that any police force said we need the act? And if so, why isn't your government telling us which police force asked? Because if there is not a police force, why did the minister say that? The advice that was uh, that the law, uh, the law enforcement officials that were giving, uh, both in terms of Ottawa and other crossings, is is the kind of tools they needed to put an end to the occupation. And if you look at the Emergencies Act order, you will see the very surgical approach, very uh, prescribed uh, specific powers that were charter compliant that were given to police. And the proof is that the occupation came to an end. That the police were able to use uh, those. Uh, uh, those tools and the resources to put an end to the occupation, and that was exactly the intent. But uh, I'm just going to ask you one more time. Again, I'm not asking if it was effective. I just want to make the, the the minister said we must follow the advice of the police. February 21st. Can you tell us? Did the police advise the minister to use the Emergencies Act? Yes or no? That's the heart of the issue here. What's the answer? Well, Evan, Evan, in our system, the police is responsible for operation. The politicians don't dictate as to how to do it. What our responsibility is to listen to, uh, to our law enforcement, and if they identify gaps and tools that they need, then we, we, we meet those, we fill those gaps, and that's exactly uh, what happened in this case with the invocation of the Emergencies Act. Raquel Dancho, uh, was it misleading or is he just simply misunderstood that in fact, uh, as Mr. Nakvi said, look, um, they said they were in trouble, we, they interpreted that they need these new powers and they did it and, and in the end the RCMP didn't ask for it but they said they were actually necessary uh, to help end the protest. 
You know, and I think this is very concerning for Canadians that the Liberal government is misleading on, on nine or ten occasions now, including the Prime Minister of this country, has misled Canadians about the invocation of the Emergencies Act. And that's something that we should all be very concerned about. The Emergencies Act, let's remember, Evan, is one of the most powerful laws in the land. It has the full ability to infringe on charter rights. That's why the threshold to invoke it is extraordinarily high. The Liberal government has failed to justify that invocation. And as a result, we believe they've been, that's why they've been misleading the public by saying, Oh, the police asked for it. Oh, there were arsons connected to it. We know that's not true. It was foreign funded. We know that's not true. Oh, there were guns there. Oh, we know now that's not true. Every single thing that they have said to justify the invocation of the Emergencies Act has been disproven. And now we know on nine or ten different occasions now, the Minister of Public Safety and the Prime Minister have told Canadians that the police asked for it, and we found out that that's not true either. So it's deeply concerning on something but, so significant that they've been misleading the public, Evan. It's unacceptable. But now, now w when Brenda Lucky, the RCMP Commissioner Raquel Dancho, said we didn't request it specifically, but it was very helpful to us, and it, and, and it helped end the protest. The government saying they needed powers. This has gone on for three weeks, and it was it was critical in resolving the issue. You don't buy that. You don't think that's what he was saying when he was saying that we were acting what, on the I quote, the advice of the police. And consistently, they've said they needed the Emergencies Act, again, the most powerful law in the, in the land, to commandeer tow trucks. Evan, we know that there are laws on the books that you can commandeer tow trucks, that police have access to getting tow trucks to remove uh, vehicles parked illegally, for example. We know that the blockades at the various different border crossings were cleared without the emergency powers. So again, it is ridiculous to suggest that laws in Canada don't exist to clear protests. We know that that's not true. And that's why the Liberal government, we believe, has been misleading the public by trying to pull in all of these uh, false truths or mistruths and uh, has been using these as, as justification when we know now that that's not true. It's disappointing and concerning. Okay, but I, I just want to, let me, let me just get to the NDP just for time. Um, the, the RCMP, I'm just going to, Mr. McGregor, your party has supported the use of the, the EN. I'm interested to see if you feel you were misled. But again, the RCMP commissioner said, we are not in a position to provide influence on the government as to when and when they should invoke a certain act. For us, it was about keeping uh, Canadians safe. They're, they're not saying that they ask or not. They said it's not our job to do that. Does your party feel they were misled? There were multiple systems failures that went in to this, uh, Evan. Uh, you know, we had a declaration of local emergency from the city of Ottawa. We had the provincial state of emergency, and then the feds finally acted on February the 14th. I think that uh, the, the minister certainly has some explaining to do. Uh, our support for the Emergencies Act at the time was based on the best available information. But in the absence of any clear explanation, the government does owe it to the Canadian public to be clear. And that is why we have both a review committee of parliamentarians and a public inquiry. And my colleague on the committee, one of the co-chairs of that committee, has been very clear that cabinet needs to come clean and they need to provide a full accounting of the decision process that was in place that led to the invocation. I also don't think that the Conservatives have out. some revisionist history on this as well. You know, for them to just say that a couple of tow trucks were needed, I think completely ignores the seriousness of the situation that was present in Ottawa but, and the way that residents, your local party, business but, owners and workers suffered. But let, let me just push back. Your party voted for the use of the Emergencies Act. So you thought that the threshold to use the Emergencies Act, your party thought that it was reached. Are you now saying that that was the wrong thing to do, that the threshold wasn't reached? So, And if it wasn't reached, why did your party then vote to utilize the very act? You were there, you saw the situation, your party knew about it. So are you saying that was the wrong thing to do, to give the powers to, to, to vote for the use of the Emergencies Act? No, no, I'm not saying that. Our, our vote on that day was a confirmation of whether the invocation on February the 14th was done in the proper way. The choice I made then was the right one. What I am saying, Evan, is that with all of these questions about whether the minister got accurate police uh, advice or whether they asked for it, what that demands at committee is a full airing of cabinet documents. And that's precisely what my, ma my colleague Matthew Green has been pushing for at the Emergencies Act Oversight Committee. So now the onus right. is on the government to come clean on that front. 
Okay, so I, I just have 10 seconds. Mr. Nakvi, will your government reveal the cabinet documents? I've asked this to Marco Mendicino, the minister, as well. So this can be cleared up. It seems like a very critical confusion here. Well, so I also sit on the committee with uh, on Emergencies Act, and there has been a production of document request that has been made. I believe that we have given the government uh, 30 days uh, to produce documents. Of course, uh, when it comes to matters of cabinet confidences or solicitor client privilege, uh, government has to make uh, certain decisions in that regards. But we look forward to receiving the documents that have been requested. Okay, uh, I know we're going to talk more about this. Ms. Dantrell, Mr. Uh, McGregor, Mr. Nackvi, always a pleasure to have the three of you on the program on a critical issue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.